In April, the FDA released a new draft guidance document on how to use the ISO 10993 standard for biocompatibility. This draft document is meant to replace eventually the G95 uh, document that is currently in practice. This document has been a little bit of a surprise to the industry and there has been some significant changes in the document. Here at Nelson Labs, we've broken down this document into three different areas. The first area is kind of a summary of ideas that the FDA presents to us. Ideas that we've already known about, but now we have it in writing that we can point to. The second area is justification ideas. So the FDA actually gives us some ideas on how to justify out of some of the testing. And then the last category are things that are concerning or changes that might impact testing that we haven't seen yet that might be forthcoming. So the first category, which is summary of ideas, here we see some of the ideas that the FDA are pointing to for biocompatibility. For example, with extraction times and, and parameters, the FDA has been requiring permanent contacting devices to be extracted at 50 degrees Celsius instead of 37 degrees. That has always been kind of tribal knowledge handed down from reviewer to reviewer or on feedback from the FDA. But now we actually have it written into this document. Other ideas involve around what tests to run for certain te uh, test requirements and also for sample preparation on how to prepare the sample. For example, with sample preparation, when devices that have multiple contact types like a stent and delivery device, the FDA wants you to test the stent different from the delivery device. So different portions of the device that have different contact times need to be tested differently. The next category is justification ideas, and this is specifically regarding to animal testing. The FDA is looking to try to take some pressure off the animal tests and look at in vitro alternatives. Right now, a lot of this conversation is regarding around chemical characterization. So the FDA gives us specific ideas on how to use chemical characterization and other justification modes around history of use and other aspects of your device to be able to justify out of the animal testing. The last category, and probably the most important, is those topics that we haven't seen yet from the FDA that could impact testing going forward. Some of these rely around, for example, with LAL testing. Right now, the LAL, or endotoxin testing, is done on devices that have cerebral fluid contact, lymphnotic contact, ocular contact, or intravenous contact, or those devices that are trying to label as uh, pyrogen-free. These devices have to do the LAL test to show the levels of endotoxin on their device. In this document, the FDA sentence reads, implants, comma, devices that contact those areas or labeled as pyrogen-free need to have LAL testing. The comma insinuates that any implant device has to have LAL testing. So we're looking at orthopedic devices in the past that do not have to have LAL testing would now be required under this particular guidance to have testing done. Another aspect in this category, it revolves around genotoxicity. Where in genotoxicity, we've known for a while that the FDA has been requiring the AIMS test, then either the mouse lymphoma or chromosome aberration, along with the in vivo mouse marker nucleus. But in this draft document, the FDA gives further clarification where it points out the mouse lymphoma as preferred over the chromosome aberration. So the FDA has been given us time to comment on this FDA guidance document. They've given us six months to be able to gather our comments together and issue these questions or comments on the, doc on the document. These are two of the areas that we're going to be commenting, specifically on that comma that implies that implants require LAL testing and also the mouse lymphoma test. As in our experience, the chromosome aberration test is more encompassing of possible genotoxic materials and also could be more sensitive than mouse lymphoma. So these, pos these points could change going forward, but they are aspects of biocompatibility that we have not yet seen from the FDA that could be concerning. We have covered just a few principles in this draft document. We're gonna go into more detail in future blog posts and webinars. For more information, please visit nelsonlabs.com.